The one question that no one has ever asked me is, where is Mr. Cobra when my husband and I have intimate relations? <laughs> I don't like the term dreadlocks because I don't think there's anything dread about my locks. I refer to my own hair as my royal crown of locks or my cobra. Mr. Cobra does uh, serve as a uh, spicy purpose sometimes. <laughs> When I'm ready to go into my sleep chamber with my cobra baby, sometimes it depends on my mood, I have to be honest. I would have him tied up in the sack and we cuddle and talk to each other. It's called communicating. I started having dreams or what others may refer to as visions where the huge cobra would appear before me and start talking to me, letting me know that I'm the chosen one. Meet my husband, Emmanuel, who is a professional lock stylist from Nairobi, Kenya. And once we met and became one in union, he became my cobra trainer. See my two babies right here? Mm -hmm. The most common comments I've had people approach me with or whisper behind my back is that as much as they liked the way I looked with my luck, most others would say there's no way that could be clean or healthy because how can you really, you know, wash locks properly if it's all knotted hair? I didn't know how to start, how to start growing locks or what the one thing I did know is that I didn't want the big chunky ones. I wanted the small ones, like, you know, the finger size ones, because I wanted to be able to get into my roots when I wash my hair to make sure it's clean and not have to walk around with that stigma of other people saying, there's no way it could be clean. A lot of people would ask me, um, well, girl, you must have a strong neck or a strong back, you know, because... <laughs> the same thing we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, because once mine get up to here, it feels so heavy, mm -hmm. I'm ready to cut. The decision to wear my hair, my locks down as opposed to being up all the time. So if I do put it up, it's going to be like, you know, maybe an hour, two, three hours. And then after that, I would start feeling the strain, so then I put it down. But mostly, I'm not into style and fashion. This is the number one tip for healthy hair and or locks is keeping it clean and loving it and kissing it and showing it much more love like I show my baby, which is Mr. Cobra right here. When I was growing up, I had absolutely no idea um, of the whole origin of dreadlocks or Rastafari. I have two sisters that said to me many years ago, well, you know, we don't like locks. We don't like the Rasta business or the dreadlock stuff, but something about you makes it different. It's okay, we accept it. I remember when I sent the first set of pictures for her, she says, I can't believe after I groomed the hair and scraped all the little things on the side and made them come together, after I worked so hard, now you just go turn it into a mop. <laughs> My advice to people who has made the decision to grow locks or dreadlocks, you gotta take care of it and probably treat it like a plant. If you don't, if you don't water it or, or feed it some fertilizer or something, it probably is gonna die or it's not gonna flourish properly. There is never, ever, ever in my life that I would ever see or feel there's a time that I want to cut my hair. It's never going to happen. I feel absolutely 
blessed and unfortunate to be recognized by the prestigious Guinness World Records as the person having the longest dreadlocks in the world, in the universe. <laughs>